Hello, it's Phil Thatch, and I'm out on my back porch in the bird studio, and uh, it's kind of fallen on some hard times, the bird studio has, and this is, this is the second bird studio uh, pop-up blind that I've had out here. Uh, Heather was nice enough to get one for me, and you know, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy to put it up and then use it and then put it away. I'm the kind of guy that leaves it out there all the time, and these things just can't handle that sort of abuse. And even though the, uh, the branches that I've got out here and the bird feeder and everything like that is working fabulously uh, with a giant hole in the top of the blind, the birds don't come out here when I'm out here. Now, I'm, one day I'm gonna work on a more permanent solution and maybe have uh, an actual wooden blind out here on the porch. But uh, in the meantime, I needed to look for a different solution. So now I'm in the backyard and there's the blind and the back porch and you can see the branches and things that attract birds. But over here, as I back up a little bit, the property line for my neighbor's backyard is right beside uh, my house. So years ago, I planted some young Leland Cypress and now they are, uh, you know, it's been 15 years or so, and they are quite mature. And I film over here all the time because I really like the look of these trees. Uh, when I have them behind me, let's see, like you might see a clip like this where I'm walking along and it looks kind of like I'm walking along in the forest, but really I'm just walking along in my side yard. So I use this all the time and and uh, what I did was I put this wrought iron bird feeder holder in the ground out here. And I put a stick on it that goes across and I put a platform feeder and I put a thistle feeder and a, a tube feeder with some black old sunflower seeds. And I put all that stuff out there and right here, I took the screen out of this window and I can put my, my camera right there to make photos of the birds as they land on that stick. Well, the problem is it's really, really dark out here. I usually use my 200 to 500 F5.6 for bird studio type work because I try to get everything as close as I possibly can to the camera, um, but here, it's too dark. Over here where I normally work, the sun rises from that direction, coming this way, and it puts great light on the birds. But once you get behind the house, where you'll need to be if you're gonna make pictures out of that bay window, it's much, much darker in the mornings when there's good bird activity. So first I had this uh, first, I had the wrought iron bird feeder holder about right here, uh, which is about perfect for the 200 to 500, but the 500 F4 that I have, it's way too close. So I moved it a little bit further over here, and now I can put the 500 F4 on the D500, get 750 effective millimeters, and use that F4 for a uh, great light gathering ability. So I tried it out this morning and uh, I'll tell you how it went. One thing that's definitely different when you're working inside with a window open, outside the only person or the only thing you have to worry about making noise that would spook the birds is yourself. But inside I had to worry about the dog moving around and I had to worry about the cat jumping out the window. Uh, all sorts of new challenges when you have a window of the house opened up. That's the neighbor's dogs that you can hear there. And strangely, they don't spook the birds at all. Okay, so as you can see, there was almost no light this morning. The ISO is 10,000, wide open at F4, and only one one hundredth of a second. With that big lens, you should be using one five hundredth or maybe a thousandth of a second would be much more the way to go. But let's see what I got. 
First arrival was this house finch. And as you can see, I had my focus point here on the wing, which is nice and in focus, but really what you want to be in focus is the eye, which with the ultra thin depth of field at F4, the eye was completely out of focus. And by the time I moved the focus point to the eye, the bird was gone. That's a little bit better, but not much. This is an interesting bird. Now, none of these pictures of this bird are any good, but it's interesting enough to at least talk about. This is a white-throated sparrow, and this is not on my bird feeder contraption. This is in the branches of the Leland Cypress. The white-throated sparrow has this uh, white throat. That's how it gets its name. And these pictures have a nice glean in the eye, but look at all the noise at 10,000 ISO. The little sparkle in the eye is kind of what makes a bird photo good, in my opinion. Without that, the bird photo is not that great. Back to the house finch. This is on the platform feeder. This is the state bird of Georgia, the brown thrasher. And look, you can see how dark it is. Look how big this pupil is. They're just like us. Their pupils get big if there's not much light. And I really like this photo, but with all the noise and uh, there's just too many problems with it to edit it and try to do anything with it. There's the white-throated sparrow again, now on the ground. Brown thrasher once again and again. This is a male house finch flying away from my perch. Here's some terrible pictures of a male northern cardinal. Back to the house finch again on the perch that I have festooned on top of the bird feeder thingy. Some more pictures of this rather uninteresting bird. Brown thrasher in the shadow of Leland Cypress. No settings changed. Brown thrasher not in the shadow of the Leland Cypress. This is a tufted titmouse. And this food that it has in its mouth is actually designed to attract eastern bluebirds. The titmouse picked it up, took a little taste. It looks like it's got its tongue on it and put it right back in the feeder and then picked up some black oil sunflower seeds, which are more to its liking. I really like this photo. Uh, of course, it's on the bird feeder and it's obviously on the bird feeder, so I, I didn't edit it out of focus. That's motion blur. Here's another one and another one, and that one's got motion blur. This one's a pretty good example. You can see how in focus it is right here where the focus point was. And these birds are tiny, and even though there's not much distance between here and the tail, you can see the tail is completely out of focus with the F4 lens. Motion blur. That picture would be pretty good if the bird was facing the right direction. All these are unedited. I'll let you know when I have one that I like enough to edit. Look at this Carolina Wren. The head's moving so fast, it almost looks like a whirlwind instead of a bird. We're down at, at uh, ISO 6400 now, so there's a little bit more light, but still I'm at 1 100th and I'm at F4 still. Now the Carolina Wren does like the food designed for the Eastern Bluebird. Now this is the first one that I've edited and what I did was I, I did this edit right here and let me show you the develop module. So you can see here how much I cropped it and I took out the obvious parts that where you could definitely tell it was on a bird feeder. And you can see here in the detail section even though this is my edit I have the noise reduction all the way up to 21 because there's just a ton of noise in this ISO 6400 picture. I've got it sharpened up to 40 and the mask is on 50. And what I did was I created a virtual copy and on that virtual copy, which I'm showing to you now, I took all the sharpening out and I increased the noise reduction all the way to 100 to get rid of all that noise in the background. And then I took both of those two images, this one with all the overwhelming noise reduction and this one that's nice and sharp on the bird but has a ton of noise in the background and I put those both in 
Photoshop. I had loaded them into Photoshop as layers, and here they are. So the background image, and I'll turn everything else off, the background image is the overly noise reduced version. And then the next uh, layer that's stacked on top of that one is the one with the sharp bird and the noisy background. I put a black layer mask on top of that. Now black covers up that entire um, layer and doesn't let anything through. So I took a white paintbrush and I painted on the bird, which you can see there's white in the shape of the bird over here on the layer mask. So that lets the sharpened bird through, but doesn't let the noisy background through. And that gives you a nice uh, sharp bird with no noisy background. And then this layer here is my watermark. So that's how I made that edit. So we'll move along. Let me put it back in library mode. There's a nice out of focus motion blur picture of a Carolina Wren. And again, the Carolina Wren does like the Eastern Bluebird food. I've never seen an Eastern Bluebird eat it, but the Carolina Wrens love it. And now we're back to house finches. And this is a Carolina Wren in the Leland Cypress puffing itself up for some reason. It wasn't cold. Sometimes you'll see birds puff up like this when it's really cold, but it was in the 60s that morning. Now here's a tufted titmouse. This is on the branch that I have on the bird feeder rig. And this one is edited. I did this edit exactly like the Carolina Wren photo that I just showed you where I have uh, two, two versions of it, one with a lot of noise reduction and one without that I used bits of both to make the final version. The D500 might not be Nikon's newest camera anymore, but it is still fantastic. And my VR500 F4G is not the latest version anymore, but it still works really, really well. Only two images today that I liked enough to edit, but I liked both of them quite a bit, even though this one was on a bird feeder. So thanks a bunch for watching. Have a great day. I hope to see you again in the next one. And I'll leave you now with a little bit of video that I shot with the D500 of some house finches. Mm -hmm.